আপনারা দেখছেন ইসলামে ওসিয়ত নামার ভূমিকা নিয়ে বিশেষ আলোচনা অনুষ্ঠান ইসলামিক উইল আসসালাম আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহি ও বরকাতুহু সম্মানিত দর্শকবৃন্দ বিরতির পর আবারো আমরা ফিরে এসেছি ইসলামিক উইল অনুষ্ঠানে আমি আবারো আপনাদেরকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি এটা আমাদের লাস্ট পর্ব এই পর্বে আমরা আমাদের যে গেস্ট আছেন উনি আমাদেরকে ইসলামিক উইল এবং ইংলিশ উইলের উপর ওনার একটা রিসার্চ দেখাবেন স্লাইড শেয়ার মাধ্যমে এবং আমরা সেখানে বোঝার চেষ্টা করব যে উইলটা আমাদের জন্য কত ইম্পর্টেন্ট কিন্তু আমি আবারও বলবো যে সম্মানিত দর্শকবৃন্দ আপনারা আমাদেরকে কোয়েশ্চেন করতে পারেন এবং আপনাদের যদি প্রশ্ন থাকে কোনো ভিউ থাকে সেটা আমাদের সাথে শেয়ার করতে পারেন উইল বি মোর দেন হ্যাপি টু আনসার ইউ কোয়েশ্চেন ওর এক্সচেঞ্জ দ্য ভিউ দিতে ইনশাআল্লাহ আই লেট ইট ব্রাদার আবিদ ইনশাআল্লাহ টু so us why is important and um, uh, why it's important for us when in terms of english inheritance law is concerned why it's important for a muslim to make a will um, um, uh, as a part of his uh, religious uh, activities okay so bismillahirrahmanirrahim in terms of the importance of a will being made um, and a sharia compliant will then the two areas which we said need to be borne in mind in terms of why this is important. The primary reason for us as Muslims to make a will is actually because it's a divine duty. It's something which has been told to us, to, uh, we've been instructed to do. And the ulama of Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them, they pointed out that it's actually something which is a sunnah mu'akkada or a strongly emphasized sunnah. And some scholars, even albeit a minority, said that it might even be a wajib when in a situation whereby one thinks or th suspects the preponderant thought in their mind is that it's actually going to be, their, their estate is going to be distributed in a uh, manner which is not in accordance with what we believe to be divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. according to the Quranic injunctions. So that's from, from, from the onset we should be clear that the, the main reason for not having, for, for having a will is for divinely guided reasons. But it might be interesting, we, we were saying, uh, for our viewers, if we are also aware and alert as to what the consequences from a practitioner, from a practitioner perspective, an legal, English legal uh, perspective of having a will versus not having a will. So first and foremost, if we just look at this uh, slide, not having a will altogether, um, the person who's, uh, uh, not, who's not in possession of a legally valid will at the point of death is said to be intestate, i.e. he doesn't have a legally valid will. He's intestate. And when he or she is intestate, then a whole set of laws as part of the English legal system no, known as the laws of intestacy kick in. That is to say, as soon as if you don't have a legally uh, compliant, a legally valid will and a Sharia compliant will, uh, that, or, or even just a, not a legally valid will according to the laws of, Eng of, of the land, then the following laws kick in. Let's have a look. First and foremost, any jointly owned assets pass directly to the surviving partner. Okay? Directly owned, uh, jointly owned assets will pass directly to the surviving partner. And that works both ways, from the husband to the wife or the wife to the husband. So any property, for example, many times you'll have homes, for example, which tend to be the largest asset that a couple might own. And if you jointly own that with your, with your spouse, then uh, what will tend to happen is if it's, if it's owned under joint tenancy as opposed to tenants in common, um, which, and this you can find out with, from landregistry.com uh, or you can f uh, find out through via your solicitor, but it's easier to, perhaps just to do it yourself. Um, it will pass directly to your surviving partner. Now that is not necessarily what the Islamic guidance would be. So this raises a problem from the very onset. So step one, jointly owned assets pass to the surviving partner. Can I add here, brother, uh, yeah. Abid, uh, as a solicitor, I can say that Sometimes we don't register our marriage, but we are religiously married. In that Precisely. case, if I die, if a like surviving so partner will not get thing, nothing. Exactly. So unless yeah, unless that uh, marriage was done overseas, if it was done, for example, in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, wherever, and it was a recognized marriage by by that country, then that would be recognizable in the UK. 
Yeah? But if it was a marriage which, which was just done, if you like a Sharia marriage where you went to the Imam and, and you, know, you conducted or I conducted the marriage between the two people and that was it, or, or you know, it's just an understanding, then that would not be recognized at the point of, 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 of uh, um, passing away of, of one of the first part, pass. So after the, any jointly owned assets are passed on to the surviving partner, what would happen to the rest of their assets, the rest of their estate? Let's have a look. The first 250,000 pounds and any chattels, chattels being personal effects, you know, any uh, your watches, anything that you own in that personal sense of the, of the word, um, that would pass on to the wife or to the f surviving partner. Um, uh, we have a caller. Can I take a call, brother? Sure, absolutely. Just hold on a minute. Um, Assalamu alaikum, caller. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you tell us your name? And can you tell us your name? Or can you tell us your name? Yes, yes. Our name is your name. And our name is your name. And our name is your name. And our name is your name. No, no, no. Our name is your name. Okay, you can speak English, you can speak English, you can speak English. Okay, I have a couple of questions really. Go ahead. So one is like, you know, as a Muslim, according to Sharia law, we like, if we die and if we leave our like wife, children, everything, it would be all our property would be divided according to Sharia law. So why do we need will? So I'm not really questioning your program, I just want to know what's the difference, you know. According to Sharia law, it would be actually divided between the mom, between the wife, and you know, like a family get a bigger portion than, than the daughter and everything. So why do we need a will, number one? And number two, in will, if it's allowed, because I read somewhere that, you know, as a, as a person, really, we are not allowed to like, discriminate the son or daughter. We can't really give anyone a bigger portion than the, than the other son. If I have a two son, I can't really give whom I love most, I can really give them more than the other one. Is it right or no? Okay. Thank you very much for that question. All right then. Jazakallah khair. Thank okay, you. I'll let you to answer the question, inshallah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sam. In terms of why, the, the first question that the, brother, the, the brother's name was, uh, um, the first question was regarding why is this actually important if ultimately uh, we as Muslims, we know that our assets are going to be distributed, dis distributed according to the Quran then why do we need to have a legal document as well? And in fact, the brother makes a very, very good point. Because in a Muslim country, where does my will actually exist? My will actually is in the Quran. Yeah? And automatically, you know, de facto, when I pass away, if I don't have a will, the government, at, at least this was the situation until some years back, I'm not sure what the current situation might be, it would be implementing the Quranic guidelines upon my estate. However, I'm not in a Muslim majority country, I'm actually governed not by Quranic law, but by English law. And the English law has a complete provision, if you like, saying that if I have a particular wish for my, my estate to be, to be distributed according to the Quran or by any other method, I'm entitled to do so. Now again, your question comes, I hear your question again saying, if we're Muslims and we know that we're going to be distributing our estate according to the Quran, then what's the problem? And the simple answer is, brother, that while you and your uh, inheritors, your, your, uh, your beneficiaries of your estate might currently all be clear that you're going to, when you die, you're going to distribute things according to the Quran and Sunnah. You might be clear on that right now. But the Prophet ﷺ said that, إِنَّ قُلُوبَ بَنِي آدَمْ كُلَّهَا بَيْنَ أُصْبُعِينَ مِنْ أَصَابِعِ الرَّحْمَانِ That all of the hearts of the children of Adam are between the fingers of Allah, he, he, he can change the heart in any way and direction he wishes. So today, my son and my daughter might actually be completely upon the sunnah and be convinced that my estate will be, when I die, distributed according to Quran sunnah. By the time I die, and I would really, I can't e emphasize this enough, when someone who's so close to you and loves you so much passes away, it's not uncommon for them to feel vulnerable and thereafter, some type of fear of poverty or one thing or the other or sentimentality should creep in and should actually override what they actually knew to be correct. And in those circumstances, you might find that while in, during your lifetime you were certain your estate would be distributed according to the Quran Sunnah, upon death, 
something very different is happening. So the only way for you to safeguard that and to ensure that what you know is your duty in terms of the Qur'an Sunnah being implemented upon your estate, the only way for you to ensure that's going to be enacted is to have a will. And this is particularly, if you like, the situation could be aggravated if you don't do that when you're in a, in a country, your own country over here, whereby um, the laws don't actually stipulate that the Qur'an Sunnah would be uh, implemented upon your estates upon the point of death. Uh, we can answer the second question. The second said. question was, does, um, d does it have to be uh, distributed equally between the, the siblings? The most important thing is that your estate has to be distributed according to the just criteria, a just criteria. Now, what is justice for us as Muslims? The clear definition of justice for us as Muslims is what Allah, the most just, the creator, has actually delineated as being just. That's the yardstick of justice. And the Qur'an and the Sunnah are unequivocal in terms of who should get what share. And it's based, it's predicated upon a philosophy and a, and, and a thinking in terms of who has what, uh, who sh burdens what responsibility within society. But that's our perception of those rulings. So in, in essence, the sons, if you have two, three sons, each one of them need to and must receive an equal portion of the assets. Between a son and daughter, who are both your blood son and daughter, biological children, then there's a two to one ratio between your son and daughters. And generally speaking, your sons are charged with the responsibility of taking care of their sisters. Uh, and that's part of the wisdom, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you very much for your nice answer, brother Abid. Um, we have go. We are really like ending the session very soon. So I would rather say, complete can you this. please complete this yes. at least? Uh, what Absolutely. Happened? So in terms of, just if we focus on the slide for, for our, in, the, in the last few moments that we have, inshallah. Any jointly owned assets will pass directly from yourself, when you die, the deceased, to the surviving partner. Thereafter, the remaining £250,000 worth of your assets, your, your estate, along with any chattels, will pass to your surviving spouse. Now, if you have less than 250,000, then all of it will pass to your surviving spouse. If you have an excess of 250,000 pounds after your jointly owned assets, then the remaining uh, remainder of your assets and your estate will be placed in two separate trusts. The first trust will be uh, locking up your money and will be accruing interest in most instances unless your executors will state otherwise. And that will give a monthly allowance or, or a periodic allowance to your surviving uh, partner. And the remaining half will be locked up for your children and it will, it will again remain locked up until the youngest of, of your children reaches the age of 18, i.e. they reach the age of legal majority. That's the laws of intestacy in, in, in a nutshell. There are many more, but this is a nutshell. Now, what should, should we as Muslims, observant of our faith, be taking away from this slide? We should be bearing in mind the following reality, that the Qur'an is very clear in what should and should not happen at the point of death. Our assets should not be passing directly from ourselves to our, our spouses, uh, bypassing our children. Um, for example, our parents have been uh, totally sidelined in this. And we know the rights and, 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 and th that, that our parents have upon us, both during our life and at the point of death. Likewise, our children. It's not right for our children to be deprived of, of their um, allocated shares of the two to one between the children and a larger portion passing on to our spouses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the ultimate owner of that wealth, um, is not, has actually decreed otherwise. And of course, the fact that interest is being accrued is also something which is a, again a major, major issue for us uh, as observant Muslims. And hence we uh, seek to avoid it, given the fact that the, the laws of the land actually have ample provision for us to observe our faith while also uh, practicing, uh, while also implementing and upholding um, the jurisdiction of the land as well. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan kasira, um, Imam Adib. Shomani to doshok bhaira, shomani to doshok buner obviously. Amra atske ronus chane price shesh por jaye. Amra khub beshi hoy to alu chane korte pari nai, kintu amra continue korbo. 
আপনাদের অনুপতির জন্য জানাচ্ছি যে আমরা এই ইসলামিক উইল অনুষ্ঠান এখন প্রত্যেক থার্সডেতে প্রতি বৃহস্পতিবারে আমরা 7টা 30 মিনিটে শুরু করব ইনশাআল্লাহ এবং পরবর্তী সেগমেন্টে আমরা আরো বিস্তারিতভাবে আইনগত দিকগুলো আলোচনা করার চেষ্টা করব যেটা এক ভাই প্রশ্ন করেছেন যদি আমি উইল না করি তাহলে তো আমার কোরআনিক শেয়ারি এফেক্টিভ হবে সুতরাং আমি উইল না করলে কি যেটা আপনারা উত্তরে পেয়েছেন যে আসলে আমরা যদি উইল না করি তাহলে আমরা যে দেশে বাস করি যেখানে স্টেট ল অ্যাপ্লিকেবল সেখানে ইংলিশ ল অফ ইনহেরিটেন্স কিন্তু প্রযোজ্য হবে সে ক্ষেত্রে আমার কোরআনিক শেয়ার যেটা বলা আছে ওইভাবে কিন্তু আমরা বন্টন করতে পারব না সেটা এফেক্টিভ হবে না আর উইল যদি করি তাহলে আমার কোনো সমস্যা নাই আমরা উইল করতে পারি সরিয়া কমপ্লায়েন্ট এবং ইংলিশ ল কমপ্লায়েন্ট দুইভাবেই কিন্তু একটা উইল মেক করা যায় আমরা কিছু কোনো মেয়ে শেষ করবো তার আগে মোটামুটি এক কথায় আমাদের দর্শকদের উদ্দেশ্যে ক্যান আই আস্ক ইউ ব্রাদার টু স্যান্ড টু সামথিং to our uh, audience about this show inshallah after that we will uh, finish this program in terms of wills in yeah. terms of uh, in terms of their participation will just in a nutshell in a nutshell i would just summarize by saying that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's is known uh, one of his names is al hakim the most wise and he selects what he places inside the quran and what is left within the sunnah out of his infinite wisdom one of the things which were if you like a consequence of his infinite wisdom is defining in several verses who should receive what from our estate at the point of death this is a mark if nothing thank else you, thank of you. the greatness uh, and the importance of wills thank you brother abid thank you very much for your uh, participation in our program shobai ke abaro shubhechha janacchi ebong ajker moto amra ekhanei shesh korchi islami ul bishoye alochonar jonno amra abaro fire ashbo apnader samne agami बृहस्पतिवार थार्सडे एट सेभन थार्टी से पर्यत सबाई भलो थकून सबा सुस्थ थ एन टीविर साथे इसलमिक उल अनुष्ठान आपनारा आबारो एनजय कर सबाई के धन्यवाद असलम आलैकुम वरहमतुल्लि वबरकू